welcome to Concordia On Air. Here's what's coming up on tonight's show. In news, Black Friday shopping. In weather, is this snow going to stay? In sports, more basketball. Top Christmas presents in a &E. All that and more. Stay tuned. Welcome to Concordia on Air. I'm your host, Grace Lenhart. And I'm Hannah Johnson. And today, because of the wonderful holiday season, we're going to be doing a little craft project. Yes. So, so we've been busy making snowflakes. Mm -hmm. They're pretty beautiful, I guess I would say. Here we have one example. And yes. it's a great little craft you can do um, because winter is coming up. It started snowing. If you want to make little ones, put them on your Christmas trees. Decorate exactly. your apartments. Yeah, and you can really make them as simple and complex as you want. This example is a little more complex. We added a few mm -hmm. different shapes. Whereas this one's a little simpler. So if you have like little kids that you like to hang out with, here we go. You can, everyone can do it. It's for all ages. It's really great. Definitely. So we're going to show you how to make your own snowflake. Yes. So first of all, you're going to need paper and scissors. Okay, and here we have an example of when it's folded. So you want to make sure to make a square. And this is how you do it. You just simply fold over the paper, and then we're going to cut off this edge. Okay? So while I cut off this edge, why don't you fold it one more time, Okay. and then you can um, start cutting it. Here we go. So you said you put snowflakes on your Christmas tree? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. We should make that a holiday tradition, I think. Exactly. Or you can actually just tape them to your wall for mm -hmm. some cute decorations. On your window, people can walk by and be like, whose window is that? Mine, it's mine with the gold <laughs> snowflakes. So the next step we're going to do, fold it one more time. Okay. So it's going to be folded kind of in six, you fold it six times after you count. And then what you do is you just take the scissors and you just decorate it. So you make different cuts here and there, like so. So Hannah, I'll give you the scissors and you can try it out if okay, you want. Perfect, thank you. So what happens after you make all those indents is it will look a little bit like, I'll fold it up like this. And then when you unfold it, it will become so beautiful. And you can hang it in your window. So let's take a look at this one that I made earlier. Here we can see we're unfolding it. And there we go. Isn't that nice? Beautiful. Love <laughs> it. And it takes Love about, it. you know, you can make them really intricate if you want to, like, have contests with your friends. It's always a good holiday activity and all that sorts of things. So it's really good. So are you excited for Christmas break? I'm so excited. Yeah. It's going to be a blast. I'm really excited for all the family and the food and the laughter, the lights, the singing. Definitely. Right. Do you have a favorite part about Christmas? I love decorating the Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. so this is really exciting. So after <laughs> these are done, we can put these Decorate on the Christmas trees. tree. Yeah, for sure. That's really good. And do you have, do you guys like have any sing-along parties or anything ever? Not really. I mean, from time to time, we'll go caroling over Christmas. So that's mm -hmm. always fun too. Mm -hmm. But what my, about you? My family always hosts this really big, really huge sing-along Christmas party, and we just sing, 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 and it's so fun. Fun. So, I think while we finish these snowflakes, we'll head, o head over to Heather and Maddie and learn a little bit about what happened on Black Friday. Welcome to News. I'm Heather Zinda. And I'm Maddie Campbell. Last Friday, shoppers all over the country flocked to their favorite stores to do some shopping in the early hours of the morning. Black Friday has become a sport for some and a tradition for many. Fargo's own West Acres Mall had record-breaking crowds this past Friday, with around 80,000 visitors. 33 of its stores opened at midnight. Shoppers were treated to great deals that made everything worth the long waits and lines. Many merchants were in a treat for, by exceeding their sales goals by noon. West Acres' record-breaking Black Friday sales definitely set an uplifting tone on this year's holiday season. On Monday morning, Cass County Jail's nurses were surprised to find that nearly 90% of the jail's inmates had contracted similar illnesses. Of the 184 inmates, 150 of them experienced flu-like symptoms during the night. Now jail and public health officials are covering all angles to find out where the illnesses came from. The culprit is believed to be Sunday night's meal, something called Chili Mac, which includes ground turkey, cornbread, corn, and cookies 
When they noticed the symptoms, nurses told inmates to drink enough water and rest. The jail keeps samples of the, all meals for seven days, so every food item will be tested for contaminants. Two men were involved in a stabbing incident in Fargo Saturday night. According to the Fargo Forum, both men checked into Essentia Health with multiple stab wounds, and police were called to investigate the incident. The suspects and victims, one of whom was in his late teens and the other in his early 20s, appear to have known each other, and police say that this was not a random act. It is now believed that the stabbings may have been drug-related. With the cold weather just around the corner, some common illnesses are bound to happen. It is sometimes hard to tell the difference between a cold and the flu. So here are some tips. Influenza begins with a sudden onset of fever, coughing, runny nose, and muscle pain, leaving you feel like you have been hit by a bus. A cold's more gradual, with symptoms less severe and relentless than the flu. A cold you can get over, while influenza you need treatment for. If you get medical attention with, within the 48 hours, you can take an antiviral medication to decrease severity. After that, these medications don't do much. The best way to fight flu is to get your annual flu vaccine, and it's not too late. So get your flu shot and prevent yourself and others from catching the flu this winter. Many people don't know, but the polar bear is listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. Help Coca-Cola and the Wa World Wildlife Fund with their Arctic and Arctic Home Project and ensure the polar bear always has a place to call home. With your purchase of Coke products in the corn crib from now until January 1st, you will be helping to save the polar bear's natural environment and also have a chance to win a 30-inch stuffed bear from Coca-Cola. Remember, the more you enter, the more you help and the more chances you have of winning. It's that time of year! The Cobber Bookstore is holding its annual Christmas sale starting on Friday, December 2nd. The sale includes a 20% discount store-wide through December 22nd. Students who stop by on Friday will be treated to some Christmas snacks from noon to 5, and visitors can enter a drawing with a number of special prizes. This may be a great opportunity to pick up some quick Christmas presents, so be sure to stop by. So Emily, will the snow be growing at an exponential rate? Well, Maddie... Well, Maddie, I think it's going to be probably a little bit more linear. As you can see right now, we are actually getting snow finally. Yay. After the whole Midwest got about a foot last week, I think it's our turn to finally get a little bit, especially since December starts tomorrow. Um, as you can see, we're kind of the only ones getting snow right now. So yay us. Good thing. And as you can see, temperatures are really cool all around. It's been getting colder, winter, I mean, it's gonna be about cold. Um, and so for our five day forecast, we are gonna get a little bit more snow um, today. Um, and then for the rest of the week until Sunday, we probably aren't gonna see too much. Um, it's gonna be a little bit warmer, 34s, so some of the snow that we do have might end up going away, oh no. Um, but Sunday then, we should get snow with 26 again, so that'll all be good. And then as you can see right now, here's our snow cover. So we only have a little bit of snow all around the United States. So hopefully that Christmas snow starts coming soon. And then students have ha who have had a chance to visit um, the BO house are gonna tell you a little bit more about what's happening. One of the buildings we wanted to build was something that reflects more the modern German architecture and modern German lifestyle. And so um, out of that came an interest because of the cultural uh, focus in Germany on environmental things, just being outdoors. Uh, and in, you know, over time also the Green Movement and the Green Party. And from that then more and more uh, development on sustainable architecture, design, mechanical systems, uh, alternative energy, renewable energy uh, systems and all that. So we wanted to bring that all together as much as possible with the primary purpose of um, creating something that's an educational building. Uh, so we're calling it an environmental living center uh, because people live here, the villagers who, uh, who come to Valsi live here as well, 
but it's a very hands-on kind of uh, place where you can do lots of different activities that all relate to environmental education or to um, or to uh, uh, alternative energy issues. So, so that's for the, the idea of what we wanted to build. What we've basically done is we've built a big cooler, right? Like a big igloo cooler and it's got a bottom and it's got a top and it's got four sides. And when you put something inside it that's hot, it's gonna stay hot. And when you put a cold thing inside it, it's gonna stay cold. And so we do that by making really thick floors and really thick ceilings and really thick walls. And there's a bunch of different ways that we do that. And then we seal it up so tight that no air can get in and no air can get out. The Passive House Standard actually started in Germany and uh, it really focuses on reducing energy consumption and which then leads to more sustainable uh, way of living. And it, it fo it, uh, the emphasis is on reducing energy consumption by 85%. That's how you meet the standard. There's two stages to meeting the standard of getting certified, which, and this is the very first certified passive house in the U.S. All the parts of the technology and how it looks and feels in here, all the sunlight, you know, people really respond to this whole environment. Part of it's the modern look of it and part of it is just the fact that, you know, this is a structure that is so energy efficient and yet it's so comfortable to be in. Um, we have a lot of people from within the community, adults especially, that, that come in and see it just to see what it looks like and to find out how it was built. And then they're going back to their contractors or their architects and asking, you know, how can I get this, this is what I want. And then we have people come in and show their architects, you know, this is what I want, or their, their contractors. It's always good to learn more about sustainability. Thank you for joining us. And today, we have a very special treat to kick off the holiday season. Some members of the Concordia Choir are going to give us a sneak peek at the upcoming Christmas concert. So today here we have Concordia Choir and Britta, who is nice enough to tell us a little bit about the Christmas concert coming up. So Britta, what is it called? Uh, the theme this year is Today Heaven Sings. Great. And do you think, um, is it sold out yet? Can people still get tickets? Uh, people can definitely still get tickets. You can uh, either call the box office or you can go to the box office in Memorial Auditorium and pick up tickets. Uh, cost is $13 for... Uh, adults, children, whatever. Um, but if you are a student at Concordia, you can get a ticket for free with your ID. There so. you go. So go get your tickets. And Concordia Choir, I'll let you guys take it away. Well, thank you so much, Concordia Choir. And we'll hear one more from you guys.
thank you so much, you guys. Wonderful. Go get your tickets if you haven't got one yet and enjoy the Christmas season. And now we're going to ha Yao and Hannah with sports. Hey, Carvers. Good evening. Welcome to sports. I'm Yao Bodum. And I'm Hannah Johnson. Monday night, the Cobber women basketball team would face off against Valley City State. The first half would be a close game, but our women would lead by one at the end of the half. The second half would be just a struggle for our ladies. They were 4 for 15 from the three-point line and 22 for 57 on the floor. And in the end, Valley City took a full advantage of it, going on a 39 to 10 run just to win the game 74 to 63. The next game opener is tonight, actually, at McAllister. First game of the conference. Come support our ladies. The Hopper women's hockey team took home a win over Thanksgiving break, beating Lake Forest, Illinois, 4-1. to one. The women's overall record is 4-1-1. One, and one. Brooke Rundle gave Concordia a lead in the first period with two goals. Abby Taff, Madison Grenger, Allie Nelson, and Kelly Vandergrift also scored throughout the game. Concordia outshot Lake Forest 34 to 16. Cobber goalie Tamara Twite made 15 saves, her third time of this year. The Cobbers play at St. Thomas Friday at 7. Keep up with the Cobbers online at gocobbers.com. Last week, the Cobbers men's basketball team faced Nebraska and ended up taking a loss. However, Aaron Lindahl led the Cobbers in scoring for the second game of this season. Lindahl had 13 points with three assists and a whooping six for six from the three-point line. This player is definitely to watch this season. After not doing so hot on the road, the men's basketball team is ready for their first conference win of the season at McAllister tonight at 745. So come and cheer our men to victory. Cobber men's hockey did not do as well as the women over Thanksgiving break, unfortunately. The men lost to UW Superior on Wednesday, 6-1. The Yellow Jackets scored in the first four minutes of the game. The Coppers were outshot 28-17 overall with a record of 5-3-1. On a lighter note, sophomore Chris Niamontes earned the Mayak Player of the Week after a game against Bethel. Chris stopped 37 shots in the game. The men will play at home versus St. Thomas on Friday. Before the, hol before the holiday break, it looks like as if the NBA would not have a season. However, last Saturday, the lockout officially ended. The plan as for right now is to play, to play about 48 games within the conference and the remaining 18 games out of their conference. Some bad news for fans is that the homecoming tour is canceled. Games are scheduled to start Christmas Day. What a gift for NBA fans. Dwayne Way had, a say, had a, to say this about the NBA season. We are thrilled and tentative that a tentative agreement has been reached and are looking forward to getting back to work and playing basketball. For more info, visit ESPN.com. Concordia junior Allie Nelson earned Mayak Player of the Week. Nelson plays hockey and soccer for Concordia. The Mayak Player of the Week award came after she scored one goal and three assists in one weekend against Lake Forest, totaling in four points. The Concordia women are now nationally ranked as number 10 for the first time ever for Concordia. Nelson is a defenseman for the team. Watch her play this Saturday against St. Thomas. Production students have been producing stories related to environmental studies at Concordia. Jocelyn Hordosky and Patrick Runlet prepared this overview of one of the college's most exciting majors. There's a, um, a term, it's called ecological literacy. And as a whole, Americans have really lost touch with nature, with ecology. We don't know where our food comes from, we don't know where our waste goes. We know very little about this world that we live in. In order to promote environmental sustainability on campus, a number of Concordia faculty have adopted environmental studies aspects into their courses through the funding of the Cargill Grant. Dr. Bishop, who is the co-chair of the Environmental Studies Department, thinks this is sending a positive message about a commitment to sustainability. Uh, one of the things it's showing is, is that we now have a commitment uh, to developing this program and to really infusing it with new vigor. Dr. Lindholm applied for the grant and has tailored his urban communities course to examine the way in which humans interact with their environment. Natural disasters are always also social disasters. 
and that they relate to the way that uh, human beings have related to their physical environments, their natural environments. Lindholm wants to provide students with a different perspective on how to look at the places people live, including here in Fargo-Moorhead. But I think one big example is that people talk about fighting the flood. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, that idea of fighting the flood presumes or kind of constructs a certain kind of relationship or understanding of nature that um, uh, shapes the way that policymakers plan and think about how to deal with the flood um, uh, in ways that I think are not necessarily optimal. Dr. Bishop hopes that Dr. Lindholm's and other courses will broaden students' views on how they affect their surroundings. I'm hoping that the students whether they're environmental studies or not, that they will be making the connections, seeing the bigger world, the broader picture out there of how, whether or not, you know, you're an environmental studies major, you're a communications major, you're a history major, you're a biology major, uh, you will see the connections that, that we all live in the environment and what we do in the environment impacts us. Lindholm wants to encourage students to be proactive as well. Um, that I really want students to, to come away from the course realizing that human hands shape the way communities are organized and that there are better ways to do that. Dr. Bishop hopes there will be lasting long-term effects for students as a result of this commitment to environmental studies. I'm hoping there's going to be a change, especially in, in students. Uh, I have a lot of high hopes for students that they, they are going to be the next generation to say enough of this. We've got to change our ways. We can't keep doing the way we're doing. With Jocelyn Horstovsky, this is Patrick Ronlet for Concordia On Air. Welcome to Amy. I'm Frederick Kilda. And I'm Katie Stout. Ladies and gents of Concordia College, even though the snow hasn't arrived yet, here in Moorhead, it is still, I'll tell you this, Christmas is right around the corner and a huge part of the Concordia Christmas tradition is the annual Concordia Christmas concert. Today, Heaven Sings is the name of the 85th annual Christmas concert and it will be performed in the Memorial Auditorium this Friday, December 2nd till Sunday, December 4th and at Orchestra Hall in Minneapolis next week. For more information about tickets, which are free with your student ID, and when the concerts are playing, I suggest you look it up at cord.edu. Hope to see you at one of the concerts or more, because Christmas isn't truly Christmas without some holiday spirit and music performed by the great Concordia choirs gathered together in these special events. Tonight in Olsen Forum, Concordia College will be hosting another group fitness event. If you're feeling a little bogged down after your Thanksgiving feast, make sure to go to Zumba tonight with all your friends starting at 9.15. An hour of this dance-tastic aerobic exercise is sure to have you feeling in tip-top shape once again. So make sure to bring your energy and excitement and dance your way back into health before finals. Ever wondered what the food in the Walt Disney movies tastes like? Well, wonder no more, because on this upcoming Tuesday, December 6th, to be precise, from 4.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., the Cobber Dining Services is hosting a Disney-themed meal. Come dine for this special occasion and try foods from your favorite Disney movies, such as Dumbo, The Aristocats, Cars, Mulan, and more. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity to enter the gastronomic world of Disney. At least I know I could go for a taste of that wonderful-looking French ratatouille. You know what, I'm, what movie I'm talking about, I guess. See you there. Looking for something to do this Friday night? This Friday, December 2nd, Ayaz will be performing with DJ Ankh and Huey at The Hub. Ayaz, known for his single Replay, and DJ Ankh, who is known best for his song Walk It Out, will start their show at 8 p.m. and play until 11. If you're thinking about going, make sure to purchase your tickets at 300 on Broadway for $23. If you're a procrastinator, then tickets are also available at the door for $28. Concordia College, want to get in on a secret? Well, you can't because it's victorious. Exciting news, Victoria's Secret Fashion Show kicked off last night on CBS at exactly 9 p.m. And yes, I saw it. And yes, I feel sorry for those out there who didn't get to witness this great fashion show last night. The show features artists such as Kanye West and Maroon 5, but 
let's be completely honest. Do we really care about the singing? The answer is no, because it's all about the spectacular outfits and the lingerie. As many other previous Victoria's Secret fashion shows, this also delivered what is expected of it. The million dollar bra worn by Miss Miranda Kerr was fabulous for those of you students who's crying themselves to sleep because you just figured out you missed out on it last night. Don't worry because there will be another airing of the, of the fashion show on December 14th. <laughs> Guest Santa granted someone's wishes earlier this year. Merry Christmas. Since de December is now upon us, hey covers, really I'm Hannah Johnson and I'm here to show you how to make a simple so, and healthy. Let's take a look at the top five Christmas presents for 2011. At number five, we have the Kindle Reader. Priced at only $79, this age friendly gift would be a hit with your significant other, parent, or any other person in your life that you want to give the gift of reading on the go. Number four brings us to gift cards. Even though gift cards are slightly impersonal, it's always nice to have the choice of what to get yourself. Making its way to number three comes DVDs. Whether it's the season of their favorite show or that new hit movie on Blu-ray, each will put a smile on their face. Coffee makers come in at number two with the different varieties out there, especially the new single cup brew machines. Any Java lover on your list would be delighted to receive one. And at number one, we have something from the heart. Whether it's a hand-knit scarf or a mix CD of your favorite songs, any person on your list would love to receive something that was made with a little extra sp something special by you. And now, let's send it back to the hosts. Hey Covers, I'm Hannah Johnson and I'm here to show you how to make a simple and healthy meal using all natural ingredients. None of the ingredients we're using are processed. Nothing is packaged. Starting with our lettuce. I'm just, it's just a whole head of lettuce. I'm just going to start tearing it from the middle on and we're just going to tear it. Also for some variety and for health reasons as well, I grabbed some spinach. And what we're going to do, this is pre-washed already too, oh, so just we're just going to take this on the cutting board <laughs> and cut the ends off. Super. Now it's time to actually cut the fresh produce that I bought today. But let's start with the carrots. We're not going to cheat and buy the store-bought pre-packaged carrots. Got these carrots that we're actually going to have to cut ourselves with the <laughs> tops still on. Okay, so I'm just going to cut one off here. I don't think we're going to need all of these carrots. We're just going to cut it into little pieces. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to move on to the cucumber. I really don't like peeling the cucumber. Make it into bite-sized pieces. So no salad is complete without a tomato, so I had to throw one of these in here. I'm just going to slice it vertically here. And just to add a little more color and flavor, we're going to add a red pepper as well. Just adds a little more sweetness to the whole meal. Alright, so I'm just going to cut this up into little pieces. Okay, so now we've cut all the ingredients for our salad. Now we have to start on the dressing. So I grabbed a lemon from the grocery store. I'm just going to split this in half. Alright, so I'm just going to take half of this lemon and squeeze it into the bowl. Maybe not even half, we'll just see, we'll just judge by the taste. So now that we have our lemon in there, now we're going to take some all natural olive oil. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a spoonful of olive oil. Now moving from the olive oil, we're going to add a little sweetness to it. So we've got tart, a little more mild, and now we're going to go for sweet. Stir up the dressing. Okay, so now that we have our dressing, we're just going to take all of this bit fresh more produce structure to the dressing and just plop as well. it right into the salad. Now I'm going to let you decide how much dressing you actually want to make for your salad. I'm going to wait to put the dressing on my salad until I actually get it on my plate and see how much I want. But I've given you a base of how to start the dressing and then you can really work with how many people you have there and how much dressing you want. Now I've shown you how to make a very simple delicious and healthy meal using only natural ingredients. 
which remember you can get these natural ingredients at the next farmer's market in the Fargo Moorhead area. So look out for those dates and times. But for now, I'm Hannah Johnson with Concordia On Air. Thank you. Well, I'm Grace. And I'm Hannah. Merry Christmas, Concordia. <laughs> <laughs>